Hello, in this lecture we will find the length of chord AB. In the drawing we have semicircle, this semicircle, and inside the semicircle we have three circles. Those two small circles are, are identical and in the middle, we have the middle circle. We know that the middle circle is tangent to the center of the semicircle at point O. That is to say, point O is the center of the semicircle, and at point O, the middle circle is tangent. To the semicircle, and uh, we know that PQ, that is actually the diameter of the semicircle, PQ equals to 8 units, and we know that the diameter of any circle is twice as large as the radius. So if the diameter of this semicircle equals to 8 units, it means that the radius will be equal to 4 units. That is to say, the value of PO, that is the radius of this semicircle, will be equal to 4 units. So PO equals to 4 units. And also OQ, OQ that is also the radius of this semicircle will be equal to 4 units that is half of the of the diameter that is actually PQ that equals to 8 units so, and we also know that OX is not only the radius of the semicircle but it is also the diameter of the middle circle and OX equals to 4 units because the radius of the semicircle equals to 4 units and uh, because of the fact that OX is also the diameter of this middle circle it will be equal to twice of the it is actually twice as large as the radius of this uh, middle circle so the radius of this middle circle will be half of the diameter that is to say it will be 4 over 2 that means that Cx, the radius of this uh, uh, this middle circle will be equal to 2 units and Oc, that is also the radius of the a middle circle will be equal to 2 units because of the fact that C is the middle in the is the center of this middle circle so OC is the radius of this middle circle and it equals to 2 units and CX it is also the radius of this middle circle and it equals to 2 units ok and we will define the center of this small circle as point M and actually and then this uh, the radius of this semi of this small circle will be defined as R uh, and uh, we will join together points M and C by a straight line point M and C are the centers of the two circles. Point M is the center of this small circle and point C is the center of this middle circle. And the distance between the centers of those two circles it is actually equals to the sum of their radiuses lengths. So we will define the touching point between those two circles this point is point Y MY it is actually the radius of this 
a small circle, therefore it equals to R. And here CY is the radius of this uh, middle circle. And the radius of the middle circle equals to 2 units, therefore CY equals to 2 units. And as I have already said, the distance between the two centers of two circles that, add, that have an external length between them, like in this drawing, will be equal to the sum of their radiuses. That is to say, it equals to R plus 2. Okay, so MC equals to R plus 2. We will define the touching point between the small circle and the tangent PQ as point N. Again, the touching point between the tangent PQ and the small circle is defined as N. Actually, N is the point uh, and it is actually defined as point of tangency of tangent PQ with this small circle and we will join points M and N together by a straight line actually MN is the radius of this small circle that is to say it equals to R and we have this radius R, it is drawn to the point of tendency, that is to say, it is drawn to point N, that is the point of tendency of tangent PQ with this small circle. Therefore, the tangent PQ will be perpendicular to this radius, that is to say, this angle will be equal to 90 degrees, and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees. Likewise, the radius OC that equals to 2 units, this radius is drawn to the point of tangency, that is to say it is drawn to point O, that is the point of tangency. PQ is tangent to this middle circle at point O, therefore point O is defined as point of tangency of tangent PQ with this middle circle. And we have this radius, the radius CO, it is drawn to the point of tendency, that is to say it is drawn to point O, that is the point of tendency. Therefore, the tangent PQ will be perpendicular to this radius, that is to say this angle will be equal to 90 degrees, and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees. So, inside the uh, quadrilateral MN of C, we have two right angles. In the next step, we will draw perpendicular from point M to OC. Okay, we will draw perpendicular from point M to OC or to CO. And so this angle will be equal to 90 degrees. And this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees. And we will define the touching point between the perpendicular from point M to CO as point D. We also know that AB called AB is parallel to code PQ. AB is parallel to PQ. And we have the rule that corresponding angles between parallel lines are equal to each other. Okay, so I will uh, actually draw all the quadrilateral M N. M, N, O, D, and the right triangle, triangle, M, D, C, and the 
the triangle CY and we will define this point as point E. And we will see it clearly. So I will draw all uh, this quadrilateral and the two right triangles, two triangles. I will draw it again in this new page. So actually we have quadrilateral MN D M N O D So here you can see that Ye is part of AB, Ye is part of AB, and NO is part of PQ. Okay, NO is part of PQ and here YE is is part is part of AB. And we know that AB is parallel to PQ, therefore we can say that Ye is also that is part of AB will be parallel to NO that is par part of PQ. So Ye is parallel to NO. Ye is parallel to NO. I will repeat again. Ye is parallel to NO and we have the rule that says that corresponding angles between parallel lines are equal to each other. That is to say those two angles that are the corresponding angles between the parallel lines Ye and NO will be equal to each other. 
I will write down the rule again, according to rule number one, corresponding angles between parallel lines are equal to each other. So those two angles that are the corresponding angles, those two angles that are the two corresponding, two, two corresponding angles between the parallel lines Y, E and, uh, and O will be equal to each other. So first of all, I will write down the rule. Corresponding angles between parallel lines equal to each other. So I'll read rule number one again. According to rule number one, Corresponding angles between parallel lines are equal to each other. And we know that Ye is parallel to NO. Ye line segment Ye is parallel to NO. Therefore, those two corresponding angles, those two corresponding angles will be equal to each other. That is to say, this angle that is actually angle DON, angle DON that is actually equals to 90 degrees, will be equal to this angle that is actually angle CEY. Okay? So we found out that this angle that equals to 19 degrees equals to this angle that is angle CEY or in other words angle CEY equals to 19 degrees. So this angle is a right angle therefore it equals to 19 degrees. Therefore triangle CEY it is also a right triangle like angle like, like triangle CDN this is also a right triangle. Okay, so here, if you focus on quadrilateral M, T, O, N, or M, N, O, D, the quadrilateral M, N, O, D, this quadrilateral, we have three right angles. 1, 2, 3, and the sum of those three right angles is equal to 90 degrees times 3 is 270 degrees. Plus the side of this angle that we, that we define as angle X must be equal to 360 degrees. Again, the sum in quadrilateral M, N, O, D, the sum of three right angles is equal to 270 degrees, plus the size of the fourth four angle that is defined as X must be equal to 360 degrees, according to rule number two, that is actually says that only to rule number two, the sum of the angles in any quadrilateral equals to 360 degrees. 
the sum of the angles in any quadrilateral equals to three hundred sixty degrees. I will read rule number two again. According to rule number two, the sum of the angles in any quadrilateral equals to three hundred sixty degrees. So therefore, in quadrilateral, and especially in quadrilateral M N O D, the sum of its angles equals to 360 degrees. That is to say, the sum of the three angles, that is 270 degrees, plus the size of the fourth angle, in total, they must be equal to 360 degrees. Here we will subtract 270 degrees from this equality and we we'll get that angle X equals to 360 degrees minus 270 degrees angle X equals to 90 degrees so actually angle X is the right angle it equals to 90 degrees so we found out that angle X is the right angle it equals to 90 degrees so we can Right here, that uh, angle, this angle equals to 90 degrees. So actually, quadrilateral M D O N, this quadrilateral has four right angles, and according to rule number three, According to rule number three, quadrilateral that has four right angles must be at least a rectangle. If not a square, it must be at least a rectangle. I will read all number three again. Or number three states that quadrilateral that has four right angles must be at least a rectangle. So actually, the quadrilateral M D N O has four right angles. Therefore, it must be at least a rectangle. And we also have. Rule number four that states that the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other. So the rule number four the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other. I 
will read again rule number four. According to rule number four, the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other. So actually here, we know that MN, line segment MN is the radius of this small circle. So here we can write down that MN, this line segment, is the radius of the small circle, that is to say it equals to R. And we know that the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other. And uh, quadrilateral MN DO is at least a rectangle, therefore the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other. It means that MN equals to DO. MN equals to DO. MN equals to DO. Actually, I said that the that quadrilateral MN DO is at least a rectangle. So it must be at least a rectangle. And uh, the other possibility is that quadrilateral MN DO is a square. Okay, and if we assume that, that quadrilateral MN DO is a square, let alone that the opposite sides of a square are equal to each other. Actually, all the sides of a square are equal to each other. Therefore, it doesn't matter at all if we consider quadrilateral MN DO as a rectangle or a square. Anyway, its opposite sides will be equal to each other. That is to say, MN equals to DO. Okay, so if it is a square, then let alone that the opposite sides of a square, they are equal to each other. Okay, so MN equals to DO. And we know that MN equals to R. It is given, uh, we found out that MN equals to R, it is the radius of the small circle. So from this equality that R equals to MN R and D, uh, it equals to DO, we will conclude that DO also equals to R. DO also e uh, equals to R, the radius of the small circle. DO equals to R. So this side of the rectangle equals to the radius of the small circle. And uh, actually, we know that CO is the radius of the middle circle, again CO, you can see in the drawing, CO is the radius of this middle circle, and the radius of the middle circle equals to 2 units, so we can write here that CO, that is the radius of the, semi of the middle circle, equals to 2 units. Okay, and we have already found out that CD is the radius of the small circle. Therefore, CO minus CD equals CO that equals to 2 units minus DO that is the radius of the small circle, CO 
minus D O equals to C D. Okay? So C D equals to C O that is two units minus D O that is R. In total, C D equals to two minus R. So I will write it down. C D equals to C D equals to C O minus D O C O minus D O and we know that C O equals to two units and D O is the radius of the small circle that is to say it equals to R so in total we found out that C D equals to two minus R C D equals to two minus R what is the value of MC? According to the rule that when two circles have external lunch between them, then the distance between their centers equals to the sum of the lengths of their radiuses, we will get that MC, that is the distance between the centers of those two circles, the small circle and the middle circle, equals to R plus 2. Okay, so MC equals to R plus 2. MC equals to R plus 2. Okay, MC, it is actually also the hypotenuse of the right triangle CDM. So we will focus on the right triangle, triangle CDM. Triangle CDM is the right triangle because this angle, angle CDM, is the right angle. It equals to 90 degrees. So MC equals to R plus 2. So we will focus on the right triangle, triangle CDM. On the right triangle, triangle CDM. According to the Pythagoras theorem, In any right triangle, the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. Therefore, in the right triangle, triangle CDM, this right triangle, the square of the hypotenuse, it is actually CM is the hypotenuse of the right triangle, triangle CDM. Therefore, the square of the hypotenuse is CM square. And it equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. It equals to CD square. Plus MD square. I will repeat again. In the right triangle, triangle CDM, the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. That is to say, CM square equals to CD square plus MD square. But we have already found out that CM equals to R plus 2. Therefore, CM square will be equal to R plus 2 square. And it equals to CD square. CD, we have already found out that CD equals to 2 minus R. Therefore, CD 
square will be equal to 2 minus r square, 2 minus r square plus md square. md square is md square. I will repeat again. In the right triangle, triangle CDM, CM square, CM is R plus 2, so CM square is R plus 2 square, equals to CD square. CD equals to 2 minus R, so CD square will be equal to 2 minus R square plus MD square. MD square is MD square. So here we will open the bracket of this equation, equation number 1, and we will get that R plus 2 square, it is actually R square plus 4 plus 4R and it equals to 2 minus R square. 2 minus R square, it is actually 4 plus R square minus 4R plus MD square. Okay? So, after we open the brackets, we got this expression. Here, we have R square in both sides of the equation number one, so R square will get cancelled. And we have four in both sides of equation number one, so four will also get cancelled. So, what is left after we cancel those two expressions? What is left is that it is actually 4R equals to minus 4R plus MD squared. So, here we will add 4R to this equation, equation number 1, and we will get that 4R plus 4R is 8R. 8R equals to MD squared. So here we will take a root out of equation number 1, this equation, and we will get that MD According to equation number one, MD equals to the square root of 8R So we got that MD equals to the square root of 8R. 8 equals to 4 times 2, so I will write it down. So MD equals to 4 times 2 times R and the square root of 4 is 2 so I write it down so we got in total that MD equals to 2 times square root of 2R MD equals to 2 times square root of 2R okay MD equals to 2 times square root of 2R. So, we can write here that MD equals to 2 times square root of 2R.
and according to the rule that the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other, we will get that MD equals to NO. MD equals to NO. MD equals to NO. It is actually rule number four. We need to rule number four that the opposite sides of rectangle are equal to each other. MD equals to NO. We have already found out that MD equals to two times the square root of 2R. MD equals to two times the square root of 2R. So from this equality, we will get that ND also equals, or NO, it is NO, also equals to 2 times square root of 2R. NO also equals to 2 times square root of 2R. So we can write here that NO And O equals to 2 times square root of 2R. So in the next step, we will join together points M and O by a straight line. And we will join points M and O by a straight line also here in our drawing. In the next step, we will join together points M and A by a straight line. Actually, Actually, MA is the radius of this small circle, MA equals to R. So we know that MA, that is the radius of the small circle, equals to R. And we also know that OA, OA is the radius of the semicircle, that is to say, it equals to 4 units. I repeat again. OA, that is the radius of the semicircle, equals to 4 units. And MA, that is the radius of the small circle, equals to R. And what is the value of the length of MO? As you can see from the drawing, MO equals to AO minus AM. AO minus AM equals to MO. AO minus AM equals to AO. O A O. A O K, A O, O and O is the same. So A O is four units, and A M equals to the radius of the small circle. And we found M O equals to M O equals to A O minus A M. So M O equals to AO that is 4 units minus AM that is the radius therefore we found out that MO equals to 4 minus R MO equals to 4 minus R so we can write here that MO equals to 4 minus R
And you can also write here that MO, MO equals to 4 minus R. Okay? So, in the next step, we will focus on the right triangle, triangle M, uh, we will focus on the right triangle, triangle M, N, O. Okay? On this right triangle, triangle M, N, O. So, in the right triangle, triangle M, N, O, According to the Pythagoras theorem, the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. The hypotenuse is MO. So the square of the hypotenuse is M O square. M O square equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars equals to M N square. Plus N O square. again in the right triangle triangle M and O according to the Pythagoras theorem the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars that is to say M O square equals to M N square plus N O square we have already found out that M O equals to 4 minus R if m o equals to 4 minus r, then m o square will be equal to 4 minus r square, and it equals to m n square, m n equals to r, therefore m n square will be equal to r square, plus m plus n o square, plus n o square, as you can see, and O equals to 2 times square root of 2R. Therefore, N O square will be equal to 2 times square root 2R square. So in total, we got that M O square, M O is 4 minus R, therefore M O square is 4 minus R square, equals to M N square, M N equals to R, therefore M N square equals to R square, and N O equals to 2 times square root of 2 R, therefore N O square will be equal to 2 times square root 2 R square. So here we will open the brackets in both sides of question number 2, and we will get that 4 minus r equals to 16 minus 8 r plus r square and it equals to r square plus the, the square of 2 times square root of 2 r is 8 r. So here we have R square on both sides of equation number two, so R square will get cancelled. In the next step we will add eight R to equation number two. 
and we will get that 16 equals to minus 8r plus 8r is 0 and 16 equals to 8r plus 8r is 16r so 16 equals to 16r here we will divide this equation equation number 2 by 16 and we will get that r equals to 16 over 16 is 1 r equals to 1 unit so we actually found out that r the radius of the small circle equals to 1 unit Okay, R equals to one unit. So we can write here that R equals to one unit. Here, CD equals to 2 minus R, and R equals to 1, so CD equals to 2 minus 1, that is to say CD also equals to 1 unit. In the next step, we will focus on those two right triangles on the right triangle CEY and on the right triangle CDM and we will prove that those two right triangles are similar to each other okay so we will focus on the right triangle, triangle CEY and the right triangle, triangle CDM. Okay, we we'll focus on those two right triangles, triangle CEY and triangle CDM. And we will prove that those two right triangles are similar to each other. First of all, we know that those two angles, they are equal to each other, they are both right angles. So we can write down that angle CEY of triangle CEY, this angle, is equal to this angle, angle CDM of triangle CDM. And both angles are right angles, that is to say it equals, they are equal to 90 degrees. So I will repeat again, angle CEY equals to angle CDM and both angles are equal to 90 degrees. And then we have also have this angle. This angle, angle C, is a common angle because it belongs to triangle CEY and this angle, angle C, also belongs to triangle CDM. So we can write down that angle C equals to angle C is a common angle that belongs to both triangles. I will repeat again. Angle C equals to angle C is a common angle that belongs to both triangles. Okay? And we also 
know that those two angles are equal to each other according to third angle theorem. Angle CYE, this angle, angle CYE is equal to angle CMD, this angle, according to third angle theorem. I will repeat again. Angle CEY in triangle CYE equals to angle CDM in triangle CDM or equals to angle CMD in triangle CDM according to third angle theorem. So what is third angle theorem? Third angle theorem states that if you have one triangle that has two angles that can grant to two angles of another triangle, then the third pair of angles must also can grant. Okay, and we actually proved here that those two angles are equal to each other, so those are the first pair of angles that can grant. And we have this angle that is a common angle, therefore this angle equals to itself. So those are the second pair of, of angles that can went. So because of the fact that those two triangles have two pairs of angles that can went, then the third pair, this third pair of angles must also can went. So Angle CYE equals to angle CMD according to, to third angle theorem. So we actually proved that all three angles of triangle CYE can go into all three angles of triangle CMD. Therefore, we proved that triangle CEY is similar to triangle C and CMD according to, to angle, 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 similarity rule. So I will write it down. We actually proved that uh, we proved that triangle CEY is similar Triangle CEY is similar, this is, this is the sign of similar. Triangle CEY is similar to triangle CMD according to angle, angle, angle similarity rule. So, what is angle, angle, angle similarity rule? Angle, angle, angle similarity rule is that if you prove that all three angles in one triangle can go into all three angles of another triangle, then those two triangles are similar to each other according to angle, angle, angle similarity rule. And from the fact that triangle CEY is similar to triangle CMD, we will conclude that the following uh, equality is true. We will actually conclude that C 
CE over CY to make it CEY. Again, CE over CY triangle CEY equals to CD over CM in triangle CDM. I will repeat again from the part that triangle CEY is similar to triangle C to is similar to triangle CMD. We will conclude that CE over CY in triangle CEY is equal to CD over CM in triangle CDM. So actually, CE over CY, what is the value of CY? As you can see here, CY equals to 2 units, it is the radius of the middle circle. And it equals to CD, as you can see from the drawing, you can see that CD equals to 1 unit. CD equals to 1 unit over CM. CM is the hypotenuse of triangle CDM, and it actually equals to R plus 2. And we already found out that R equals to 1, that is to say CM equals to 1 plus 2, that is actually 3. CM equals to 3 units. Okay. So we actually found out that CE over 2 equals to 1 over 3. Here we will multiply equation number 3 by 2 and we will get that CE equals to 2 over 3 or 2 thirds. CE equals to 2 thirds. So here we found out that CE equals to two third, and what is the value of DE? You can see from the drawing that DE equals to CD minus CE again DE or ED equals to CD minus EC. I write it down. ED equals to CD minus CE. I will repeat again. ED equals to CD minus CE. So ED equals to CD that is 1. Minus CE, that is two third. One minus two third is third. So we found out that ED equals to third. ED equals to third. One over three. And what is the value of OE? The value of line segment OE, as you can see from the drawing, OE, OE equals to OD plus DE. OE equals to OD plus DE. I will repeat again, OE equals to OD plus DE.
So OE equals to OD that is R that equals to 1 plus DE or ED that equals to third. 1 plus third is 4 third. So we found out that OE equals to 4 over 3 units. OE equals to 4 over 3 units. So we can write here that OE this line segment equals to 4 over 3 units. So in the next step we will connect together points O and B by a straight line. We will connect together points O and B by a straight line. So here, what is the size of angle OEB? What is the size of this angle? Actually, we have a new rule according to rule number 5. The sum of two one-sided angles between parallel lines equals to 180 degrees. I will write it down. The sum of two one-sided angles between parallel lines equals to 180 degrees. So I will read rule number 5 again. Rule number 5 says that the sum of two one-sided angles between parallel lines equals to 180 degrees. Okay. And we know that AB is parallel to PQ. AB is parallel to PQ. It is given us the question that AB is parallel to PQ. Therefore, according to rule number 5, the sum of those two one sided angles will be equal to 180 degrees. Okay? This angle equals to 90 degrees. This is the first one-sided angle. And this angle equals to OEB.
angle OEB and according to rule number 5 the sum of those two one-sided angles must be equal to 180 degrees I will repeat again We know that AB is parallel to PQ, it is given us the equation. And according to rule number 5, the sum of the two one-sided angles that are located between the parallel lines AB and PQ must be equal to 180 degrees. That is to say 90 degrees, that is the first one-sided angle plus angle e -O -O -E -B, that is the second one-sided angles, the sum of them must be equal to 180 degrees according to rule number 5. So here we will subtract 90 degrees from this equality and we will get that angle OEB equals to 180 degrees minus 90 degrees is 90 degrees. Okay. So we found out that this angle is the right angle, that is to say it equals to 90 degrees. So if this angle is the right angle, if angle OEB is the right angle, then triangle OEB is the right triangle. Okay, so triangle OEB is the right angle, so I will copy the right triangle, triangle OEB in the new page. So this is the right triangle, triangle OEB. We have already found out that OE equals to 4 over 3 units and OB is the radius of the semicircle that equals to 4 units. So the only thing that is left to do is to find out the value of EB, we will find out the value of EB according to the Pythagoras theorem. So, in triangle OEB, according to the Pythagoras theorem, The square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. That is to say, the square of the hypotenuse, the hypotenuse is OB, therefore the square of the hypotenuse is OB square. And it equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars, that is to say it equals to OE square plus E B square. I will repeat again in the right triangle triangle O E B according to the Pythagoras theorem, OB square equals to OE square plus EB square. 
but we know that OB equals to 4, therefore OB square is 4 square, 4 square is 16, so 16 equals to OE square. O equals to 4 over 3, so O e square is 4 over 3 square, plus E B square. So we actually found out that O B equals to 4, so O B square is 4 square, 4 square is 16. Plus, uh, it, it equals to O E square. O E equals to 4 over 3, so O E square is 4 over 3 square plus E B square. 4 over 3 square is 16 over 9, so I will write it down. Here we will subtract 16 over 9 uh, from equation number 4. This equation is we will get that 16 minus 16 over 9 equals to EB square. Again, 16 minus 16 over 9 equals to EB square. Here we will multiply 16 by 9 and then we divide it by 9 in order to have a common factor with 16 over 9. So we we'll get that 16 times 9 over 9 minus 16 equals to EB square So here, 16 times 9 minus 16 is 16 times 8, so I'll write it down. So we know that uh, 16 equals to 2 times 8, so I'll write it down. We substitute 16 by 8 times 2. We get that we're going to do equation number 4. 2 times 8 times 8 over 9 equals to EB squared. So here we will take a root out of equation number 4 and we will get that 2 equals to the square root of 2 times 8 times 8 over 9. So the square root of 8 times 8 is 8 and the square root of 9 is 3. So I write it down. In total we will get that EB equals to the square root of 2 times 8 over 3 units. We found out that E B equals to the square root of 2 times 8 over 3 units. 
So, in the next step, In the next step, we will prove that those two white magnets can go into each other. So, we will actually prove, prove that triangle OEB, this green triangle, right triangle, green right triangle, is congruent to triangle OEA. So, I will copy again those two. Right triangles, and we will prove that they can relate to each other. So we prove that those two right triangle, triangles can go into each other. Triangle OEB can go into triangle OAE. So we focus on the right triangle, triangle OAE and triangle OEB. Those two right triangles AO equals to OB equals to 4, so the hypotenuse of those two right triangles they are equal to each other, they are equal to the radius of the semicircle, that is 4 units, so OA equals to OB equals to 4 units and the OE is a common side that is to say it belongs to both triangles so OE equals to OE is a common side that belongs to both right triangles so we proved that the hypotenuse and the perpendicular OE in triangle OEB can go into the hypotenuse and the uh, perpendicular OE in triangle OEA. Therefore, we prove that those two right triangles can go into each other according to the rule that so actually triangle. O A E is congruent. So this is the sign of congruent. It is congruent to triangle O E B. According to Actually, rule number six, according to rule number six, it states that if 
na hipotenuzu. a perpendicular in one right triangle can go and to the hypotenuse and a perpendicular in another right triangle then the right triangles can go to each other so I'll repeat on rule number 6 again according to rule number 6 if the hypotenuse and a perpendicular in one right triangle can go and to the hypotenuse and a perpendicular in another right triangle, then the right triangles can go out to each other. And if we proved that the hypotenuse OB and the perpendicular OE in triangle OEB can go out to the hypotenuse OA and the perpendicular OE in triangle OEA therefore we proved that those two right triangles can go into each other according to rule number 6 and from the fact that those two right triangles can go into each other we will conclude that AE equals to EB AE equals to EB Again, AE equals to EB according to the rule that corresponding angles in congruent, corresponding sides in congruent triangles are equal to each other. Those two right triangles can go into each other, therefore, the two corresponding sides, AE and EB, will be equal to each other. That is to say, AE equals to EB. And what is the value of AB? The value of AB, as you can see from the drawing, AB equals to AE plus EB. AE plus EB. Again, AB equals to AE plus EB. But we know that AE equals to EB, so we can substitute AE by EB. And we will get that AB equals to EB plus EB that is to say AB equals to 2 times EB and we have already found out that EB equals to 8 over 3 times square root of 2 units so we, in total we got that AB equals to 2 times 8 is 16 over 3 times square root of 2 units.
or in terms of numbers, AB equals to 7.54 units. I repeat again, AB equals to either 16 over 3 times square root of 2 units, or in terms of numbers, AB equals to 7.54 units. I repeat, it, it, I repeat again here, that called AB equals to either 16 over 3 times square root of 2 units, or in terms of numbers, called AB equals to 7.54 units. Okay, so now we will summarize the lecture. Actually, we wanted to find out uh, the size of the length of code AB and in the drawing we have a semicircle and inside this semicircle we have three circles and those two small circles are identical and the middle circle is tangent to the semicircle at point O and point O is also the red uh, the center of the semicircle and point C is the center of the middle circle and we know that PQ equals to 8 units PQ it is actually uh, the diameter of the semicircle and if PQ that is the diameter of the semicircle equals to 8 units then the radius will be equal half of it that is to say the radius of the semicircle equals to 4 units that is to say PO equals to 4 units and OQ also equals to 4 units and OX that is also the radius of the semicircle equals to 4 units and we also know that code AB is parallel to PQ Okay, and we want to find out the length of AB, the length of code AB. Okay, so actually, first of all, we connected together points C and M of the middle circle and the center of the middle circle is at point C and the center of the small circle, this small circle is point M is at point M and the distance between the centers of two circles that have an, exter an external lunge between them equals to the sum of their of the sum of the lengths of their radiuses that is to say MC equals to R, that is the radius of the small circle, plus 2, that is the radius of the middle circle. So MC equals to R plus 2, and we connected together points M and N by straight line. MN is the radius of this small circle, that is to say it equals to R, and M is the tangent, is the point, N is the point of tangency between tangent PQ and the, this small circle and we have this radius, the radius R is drawn to the point of tangency that is to say it is drawn to point N that is the point of tangency of tangent uh, PQ with this, this small circle Therefore, because of the fact that the radius R, this radius MN, is drawn to the point of tendency, uh, therefore the tangent PQ is perpendicular to this radius, that is to say this angle equals to 90 degrees and this angle also equals to 90 degrees. Likewise, we have the radius CO that is drawn to the point of tangency, that is to say it is drawn to point O, that is the point of tangency of tangent PQ with this middle circle. Therefore, uh, according to the rule that whenever the radius is drawn to the point of tangency, 
then the tangent PQ will be perpendicular to this radius. That is to say this angle will be equal to 90 degrees and this angle equals to 90 degrees. Okay, so here we have two right angles and from point M we draw perpendicular to OC. And we define the touching point between the perpendicular and line segment CO or the radius CO as D. And because of the fact that MD is perpendicular to CO, therefore this angle equals to 90 degrees and this angle is also equals to 90 degrees. So here in quadrilateral MNOD we have three right angles and we also have uh, a rule, rule number one that states that corresponding angles between parallel lines are equal to each other. We know that AB is parallel to PQ, therefore those two corresponding angles will be equal to each other. And because of the fact that this angle equals 90 degrees, then this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees. Okay, here we have rule number one. It says that corresponding angles between parallel lines are equal to each other. I repeat again, according to rule number one, corresponding angles between parallel lines are equal to each other. So, therefore, those two angles, they are equal to each other because of the fact that E Y is parallel to N O. Therefore, those two corresponding angles will be equal to each other. And so, if this angle is 90 degrees, this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees. So, angle C E Y is equal to 90 degrees. Okay, and then we also have Rule number two that states that okay, uh, I repeat again on rule number one, according to rule number one, corresponding angles between parallel lines are equal to each other. That is to say, this angle equals to 90 degrees and it equals to this corresponding angle. So those two angles are both equal to 90 degrees. Angle CEY, this angle, is equal to 90 degrees, like this angle that equals to 90 degrees. Those two corresponding angles are equal to each other, so if this angle equals to 90 degrees, then this angle equals to 90 degrees. So angle CEY equals to 90 degrees. Okay. Then we focused on the quadrilateral 
MNDO on quadrilateral MNDO we have three right angles, one, two, three, and we know that according to rule number two, we know that the sum of the angles in any quadrilateral equals to 360 degrees, and especially in quadrilateral MN. Oh, D, this quadrilateral, the sum of the angles must be equal to 180 degrees. Therefore, the sum of three angles, three right angles, that is 90 times 3, it is 270 degrees, plus the side of this angle, this is angle X, must be equal to, 180, uh, to 360 degrees. Again, the sum of the three right angles that equal equal to 270 degrees plus the size of the four angle must be equal to 360 degrees according to rule number two. That states that the sum of the angles in any quadrilateral equals to 360 degrees. Okay, so here is subtracted 270 degrees from this equality and we got that angle X equals to 90 degrees. So we found out that this angle is a right angle, it equals to 90 degrees. And we actually have rule number 3, according to rule number 3, quadrilateral that has four right angles, like in our case, quadrilateral MNDO has four right angles. Quadrilateral that has four right angles must be at least a rectangle. If not a square, it must be at least a rectangle. Okay? And we also have rule number four that says that the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other. Okay? Here, it means that MN equals to DO and in rectangle MNOD and also MD equals to NO. According to rule number four, that the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other. Okay, again. According to rule number 4, MN equals to DO, MN equals to DO, and we know that MN is the radius of the small circle, that is to say it equals to R, so MN equals to DO, MN equals to DO according to rule number 4, what we know that MN equals to R, so from this equality, we will conclude that DO also equal, equals to R. DO also equals to R, that is the radius of the small circle. And here we know that CO is the radius of the middle circle, that is to say it equals to two units. CO here CO is the radius of the middle circle, that is to say it equals to two units. So here, CO equals to two units. And uh, here, uh, R, DO equals to R. CO equals to two units and DO equals to R. And what is the value of CD? CD equals to CO minus DO. Okay, CD equals to CO equals to CO minus DO, and we know that CO equals to two units, and DO is the radius of the small circle. That is to say, it equals to R. So in total, we got that CD equals to two minus R. CD equals to this line segment, line segment CD equals to two minus R. And what is the value of the hypotenuse MC? The hypotenuse of triangle CDM is MC. 
MC, it is actually also the distance between the centers of the small circle and the middle circle. The CM equals to the sum of the lengths of the radiuses of the small circle and the middle circle, that is to say it equals to 2, that is the radius of the middle circle, plus R, that is the radius of the small circle. So it equals to 2 plus R, that is the sum of the two radiuses. Okay, so MC equals to R plus 2, MC equals to R plus 2, And we, then we focused on the right triangle, triangle CDM. On the right triangle, triangle CDM, as you can see here, the right triangle, triangle CDM. According to the Pythagoras theorem, the square of the hypotenuse, that is to say MC square, equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars, equals to CD square plus MD square. Again. Okay. In the right triangle, triangle CDM, CM square equals to CD square plus MD square. We have already found out that CM equals to R plus 2, so CM square will be equal to R plus 2 square. CD equals to 2 minus R, therefore CD square will be equal to 2 minus R square. And MD square is MD square. So here, we open the brackets of this equation, equation number one, and we got that r plus 2 square, it is actually r square plus 4 plus 4r. Four and 2 minus r square is 4 plus r square minus 4r plus md square. Here we have r square on both sides of equation, this equation, equation number one, so r square will get cancelled. And we also have 4 in both sides of equation, this equation, equation number 1, so 4 will also get cancelled. And what is left from equation number 1 after we cancelled those expressions, what is left? It is actually 4r equals to minus 4r plus md squared. So here we uh, added 4r to this equation, equation number 1. 4r plus 4r is 8r. and 4r minus 4r is 0, so in total we got that 4r equals to md squared. So here we took a root out of this equation, equation number 1, and we got that md equals to the square root of 8r. 8 is 4 times 2, so we subtracted 8 by 4 times 2, and we got that md equals to the square root of 4 times 2r. The square root of 4 is 2, so we got that md equals to 2 times square root of 2r. So we found out that md equals to 2 times square root of 2r, and according to rule number four, that the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other. In, in rectangle MD and O, it means that MD will be equal to NO. MD will be equal to NO, and as I already mentioned, it doesn't matter at all if uh, MNDO is a rectangle or a square because if it is a square, let alone that the opposite sides of a square will also equal to each other, all the sides of the of a square are equal to each other. So anyway, we will get that MD equals to NO. So we know that MD equals to NO and we have already found out that MD equals to 2 times square root of 2R. So from this equality, we will we'll conclude that NO also equals to 2 times square root of 2R. So here, NO also equals to 2 times square root of 2R. Then 
we connected together points M and O by straight line and we focused on the right triangle, triangle M and O. On the right triangle, triangle M and O, the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. Uh, but before that, we know that AM, AM is the radius of the small circle, and OA is the radius of the same circle that equals to 4 units. And what is the value of OM? OM equals to OA minus AM. That is to say it equals to OA that is 4 units minus AM that is the radius of the small circle. That is to say OM equals to 4 minus R. OM equals to 4 minus R. So we found out that OM equals to 4 minus R and O equals to 2 times square root of 2R and MN is the radius of the small circle and we already found out that the radius of the small circle equals to one unit. Then we focused on the right angle triangle M and O according to the Pythagoras theorem. The right angle triangle M and O, the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. That is to say, M O square equals to M N square plus N O square. MO equals to 4 minus R, so MO square will be equal to 4 minus R square, and it equals to MN square. MN equals to R, so MN square will be equal to R square, and O equals to 2 times square root of 2R, and so NO square will be equal to 2 times square root of 2R square. Okay, so we open the brackets of this equation, equation number 2, and we got that 4 minus R square, it is actually 16 minus 8R plus R square and the square of 2 times square root of 2R is 8R. So here we, sub we have R square on both sides of equation number 2 so R square will get cancelled and what is left after? After we cancelled R square we added to this equation equation number 2 8R. So here 8R minus 8R is 0, so what is left in this side of equation number 2 is 16, and here 8R plus 8R is 16R, so in total we got that 16 equals to 16R. We divided this equation, equation number 2 by 16, and 16 over 16 is 1, so we got that the radius of the small circle equals to 1 unit. The radius of the small circle R equals to 1 unit. So here, R equals to 1, R equals to 1. And here, CD is 2 minus R. And R equals to 1, so CD equals to 2 minus 1, that is 1. So CD also equals to 1. And then we focused on those two right triangles, triangle, the right triangle, triangle CEY, and the right triangle, triangle CDM, and we actually proved that those two right triangles are similar to each other. So we focus on the right triangle, triangle CEY, and on the right triangle, triangle CDM. On those two right triangles, First of all, we know that those two angles they are equal to each other, they are right angles. So angle CY equals to angle CDM, and both angles, they are right angles, they are equal to 90 degrees. We also know that this angle, angle C, is a common angle, it belongs to both triangles, angle C belongs to the right triangle, triangle CEY, this triangle, and the angle C also belongs to the bigger right triangle, triangle CDM. Therefore, we can write down that angle C equals to angle C as a common angle that belongs to both triangles. And the last thing that is left to do is those two angles are also equal to each other according to third angle theorem. 
that is to say angle CYE into angle CYE equals to angle CMD into angle CMD. They are equal to each other according to third angle theorem. So what is third angle theorem? Third angle theorem is that if you prove that all three angles in one triangle can go to all three angles in another triangle, then you actually prove that those two triangles can uh, similar to each other according to angle, 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 similarity rule. No, I made a mistake. The third angle theorem is that if you prove that two angles in one triangle can go to two angles in another triangle, then the third pair of angles must also can go end. And we actually proved that those two angles they are equal to each other, they are both right angles. This angle is a common angle, so this angle equals to itself. So we proved that two pairs of angles in those two triangles can go end. Therefore, the third pair, the, those third pair of angles must be also can go end. That is to say, angle CYE in triangle CYE equals to angle CMD in triangle. CMD according to Ferdinger theorem. Okay, so according to Ferdinger theorem, if you have two pairs of angles that can go out in two triangles, then the third pair of angles must also can go out. So in our specific case, those two angles they are equal to each other according to Ferdinger theorem. So we actually proved that all three, uh, three angles in triangle CUI can go out to all three angles in triangle CDM. Therefore, we proved that those two right triangles can go into each other according to angle, 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 similarity rule. We prove that angle, triangle CEY is similar to triangle CMD according to angle, 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 similarity rule. So what is angle, 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 similarity rule? Angle, 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 similarity rule is that, that if we prove that all three angles in one triangle can go into all three angles in another, in another triangle, then you prove that those two triangles they are similar to each other according to angle, 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 similarity rule. And from the fact that triangle C in Y is similar to triangle C and D, we will conclude that this equality true, the following equality is true, that C E over C Y, C E over C Y in triangle C E Y is equal to CD over CM is equal to CD over CM in triangle CMD. Okay? CE over CY. What is the value of CY? We have already found out that C, the value of CY, you can see here, CY is the radius of the middle circle, that is to say it equals to two units. So CY equals to 2. What is the value of CD? The value of CD here. CD. The value of CD is 1 unit. So CD equals to 1. And what is the value of CM? CM is R plus 2 and R equals to 1. That is to say CM equals to 1 plus 2. That is 3 units. So CM equals to 3 units, so in total we got that CE over 2 equals to 1 over 3. We multiply this equation, equation number 3 by 2, and we got that CE equals to 2 third. CE equals to 2 third. So here CE equals to 2 third. And CD equals to 1. CD equals to 1. So, so DE will be equal to CD minus CE. Again, DE will be equal, or ED will be equal to CD minus CE. DE equals to CD minus CE. But we have already found out that CD equals to 1 and CE equals to 2 thirds. Therefore, ED equals to 1 minus 2 thirds. That is to say, ED equals to 2 thirds. ED equals to 2 thirds. CE equals to 2 thirds. CD equals to 1. And what is the value of OE? The value of OE, OE equals to OD plus DE. 
OE equals to OD plus DE and uh, actually OD equals to 1, it is the radius of the small circle, it equals to 1 and we already found out that DE equals to third. So in total OE equals to 1 plus third, that is to say OE equals to 4 over 3 units. OE equals to 4 over 3 units. Then we actually proved that uh, we actually connected points O and B by a straight line and we proved the triangle OED, triangle OEB, this green triangle is a right angle because of the fact that this angle equals to 90 degrees. Why? Uh, this angle equals to 90 degrees because of the fact that AB is parallel to PQ and those two angles they are located between the parallel lines AB and PQ and according to the rule that the sum of two one-sided angles that are located between parallel lines is equal to 180 degrees according to rule number 5 that the sum of two one-sided angles between parallel lines equals to 180 degrees, we will get, we know that AB equals to PQ, so those two angles are located between the parallel lines AB and PQ, therefore they will be equal to 90 degrees. The first one-sided angle is 90 degrees, the second one-sided angle is angle OEB, and the sum of them, according to rule number 5, equals to 180 degrees. That is to say 90 degrees plus angle OEB equals to 180 degrees. We subtract 90 degrees from this equality and we got that the value of angle OEB is 90 degrees. That is to say this angle is a right angle, therefore the green triangle triangle OEB is a right angle. So we actually, I copied again the right triangle, triangle OEB that is a right angle. Triangle OEB is a right triangle, and we have already found out that OE equals to 4 over 3 units, and OB is the radius of the semicircle, that is to say it equals to 4 units, and the only thing that is left to do is to find out the value of EB, and we will find out the value of EB according to the Pythagoras theorem. According to the Pythagoras theorem, in the right triangle, triangle OEB, the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. That the square of the hypotenuse is OB square and it equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars, that is to say it equals to EB square plus OE square, OB square equals to OE square plus EB square, OB equals to 4, so OB square is 4 square, 4 square is 16, OE equals to 4 over 3, so OE square will be equal to 4 over 3 square plus EB square. So here 16 equals to 4 over 3 square, 4 over 3 square is 16 over 9 plus EB square. We subtracted 16 over 9 from this equation, equation number 4, and we got that 16 minus 16 over 9 equals to EB square. Here we multiplied 16 by 9 and then we divided it by 9 in order to have a common factor with 16 over 9, and we got this, uh, that 16 times 9 minus 16 over 9 equals to EB square. 16 times 9 minus 16 is 16 times 8. So in total, we got that 16 times 8 over 9 equals to EB square, and we know that 16 equals to 2 times 8. So in total, we got that 2 times 8 times 8 over 9 equals to EB square. We, we took a root of, the, of this equation, equation number 4, and we got that EB, the value of, AB, of EB equals to the square root of 2 times 8 times 8 over 9. The square root of 8 times 8 is 8, and the square root of 9 is equal to 3. So in total we got that the value of EB is equal to the square root of 2 times 8 over 3 units. Then we actually proved that those two green right triangles can relate to each other. So I copied again those two green triangles and we proved that those two uh, right triangles can go into each other, so we focused on the right triangle OEA and on the right triangle triangle OEB and we proved that they are 
can go into each other. Why they can go into each other? Because of the fact that OA equals to OB, they are put in those triangles, they are equal to each other, they are both equal to four units, and OE is a common side, it belongs, that is to say, it belongs to both right triangles, so OE equals to OE as a common side, and by proving that the hypotenuse and the perpendicular are equal to each other on those two right triangles, we actually prove that those two, uh, those right triangles, they are can go into each other, and they actually can go into each other according to rule number six. What is rule number six? Rule number six says that if the hypotenuse and the perpendicular in one right triangle can go into the hypotenuse and the perpendicular in another right triangle, then the right triangles can go into each other. So we actually proved. So if we have hypotenuse and perpendicular in one right triangle that can go into the hypotenuse and uh, perpendicular in another right triangle, then we actually proved that those two right triangles can go into each other. And here we proved that those two hypotenuse are equal to each other and the common side is equal to itself. So we proved uh, actually that those two right triangles can go into each other according to rule number six. And from the fact that those two right triangles can go into each other, we will conclude that AE equals to EB according to the rule that corresponding sides in can go into triangles are equal to each other. Those two right triangles can go into each other, therefore the two corresponding sides AE and EB, they are equal to each other. So AB equals to AE, and what is the value of AB? The value of AB, according to the drawing, AB equals to AE plus EB. AB equals to AE plus EB, and we know that AE equals to EB, so we can substitute AE by EB in, here, in this equality. We substituted AE by EB, and we got that AB equals to EB plus EB, that is to say AB equals to 2 times EB, and we have already found out that EB equals to 8 over 3 times square root of 2 units. So in total, AB equals 2 times 8 over 3 times square root of 2 units. That is to say, 8 times 2 is 16. So we found out that AB equals to either 16 over 3 times square root of 2 units, or in terms of numbers, AB equals to 7.54 units. I'll repeat again. We found out that chord AB equals to either 16 over 3 times square root of 2 units, or in terms of numbers, line segment AB or chord AB equals to 7.54 units. Okay? Thank you very much.